baffled by the lack of control it was able to exert over the renegade demons, the ultimate evil traveled north into the Plaguelands. This area was home to the undead, who had eked out an existence there for eons. It was certain they would be eager to join the ultimate evil. After the demons had escaped the ultimate evil, it was very keen to bring undead creatures back under its control. To this end, the evil traveled to an area that was formerly known as the Plaguelands. At one time, a huge cemetery graced the countryside here, providing a happy place for the undead to hang out. Assuming the undead ever had any concept of happiness, that is. But that was 20 years ago. Since then, the Alliance had turned this place into the Poshlands. It was an unbearably good place, which was heavily guarded due to its dubious past. The ultimate evil would first need to take care of those guards and completely destroy the place before it could take control of the undead.
Word of the ultimate evil's presence had spread among the supporters of the Alliance like wildfire. The evil would soon have to deal with their unwillingness to tolerate its presence. There are enemies in your dungeon. Enemies have entered the dungeon.
throne room is under attack. It's payday. Enemies have entered the dungeon.
There are enemies in your dungeon. Payday. There are enemies in your dungeon.
There are enemies in your dungeon. There are enemies in your dungeon. Payday! Enemies have entered the dungeon. Just in time, or rather better late than never, some of the Horde's troops appeared from the south. They had presumably just come from paying a brief visit to their favorite pub, the Winchester, which was run by two brothers. Whatever. These troops came to help, and the ultimate evil could certainly make good use of them.
Although the Horde was still exposed to constant Alliance attacks, the offense, there was a small Alliance military camp to the south, which guarded the border to the Poshlands. An attack from inside the Poshlands would be sure to surprise them. Enemies have entered the dungeon. There were few that could withstand the ultimate evil's horde. The Alliance's military camps in the south were obviously not amongst those rare few. They disappeared from the surface faster than a brain amidst a horde of zombies. It's payday. After the Alliance had repeatedly failed with their clumsy wave tactics, the decision was made to overrun the ultimate evil with a single giant attack. Of course, this would fail, but it would be close, very close. There are enemies in your dungeon. From the book, 
plague lands until the morning mists arise. The undead in these lands were a scary bunch. They lacked any of the glitz and glamour which we now associate with the undead, particularly vampires. It would be completely futile to search for a key love story anywhere around here. Enemies have entered the dungeon. room is under attack. the man run oh. the last alliance forces have been defeated and with them the armies of good have been driven back for the time being at least now it was time to change tack and start the attack the posh lands now needed to be restored to their former glory Payday. Enemies have entered the dungeon.
Stanley was wondering whether he should return to his desk. Oops, sorry, I'm in the wrong script. There are enemies in your dungeon. Only 20 years lay between the deadly plague lands and the unpleasantly swanky posh lands. It was incredible what a little pink could do. It's payday.
enemies have entered the dungeon. There are enemies in your dungeon. In the east of the posh lands lay a small alliance camp that looked after the area's agriculture. This wouldn't be of much help against a bunch of trained orcs. outpost in the east was unable to resist the horde. Another part of the posh lands fell to make room for some beautiful tombs from which undead would soon rise. Once, the plague lands were a cozy place for the undead. However, after the ultimate evil's fall, the place was taken over by a group known as the Crimson Crusade. They transformed it into the posh lands. They even made a film about it, a very sad story called Unlife is Beautiful. Enemies have entered the dungeon. Back when the plague land still existed, harmony and unity pervaded the lands. There were no conflicts because the undead do not wage war against each other. There were no needy because undead do not have any needs. All in all, an idyllic utopia, if you're dead.
It's payday. Enemies have entered the dungeon. By the way, did you know that in the first dungeons, a certain Calypso, not to be confused with the great publisher Calypso, joined in the game? You didn't? Well, I wanted to astound you with this momentous bit of trivia. You really should get back to playing the game again. Enemies in your dungeon. There are enemies in your dungeon. Oh yes, back to the playground. 
Here, the undead sometimes like to have grand dances, real thrillers, so to speak. But those days were gone once the posh lands came into existence. <laughs> In the middle of the posh lands, directly at a crossroads, there lay the small but well-fortified village of Bunnyfield. The Alliance would send small attack groups towards the dungeon from here as well. The throne room is under attack. Payday. There are enemies in your dungeon. By the way, the dungeon's two developers were not broken into and no one stole the source code. The game was also not split into two. The developers have not even randomly offended people on social media or slept with any journalists. All in all, the game development was very uneventful. That's such a yawningly boring story. How did it ever make it into the dialogue?
Enemies have entered the dungeon. It's payday. <laughs> the capital of the posh hand lay in the northwest of the country. Hipster. Yes. Granted. A terrible. You do. Despite its ridiculous name, Hipster Bridge was heavily done and would resist attack by all means possible. The Horde would have to work hard here to bring the city back into the plague lands. Enemies have entered the dungeon. There are enemies in your dungeon.
Enemies have entered the dungeon. Not all of the plague lands had been conquered by the Alliance. One area was so especially steeped in evil that it could not be cultivated at all. It was quickly covered with a magical spell and surrounded by a massive wall. An entrance would probably only be found once the rest of the posh lands had been destroyed. It's payday. In the north, the playgrounds, or maybe hotlands, were bordered by an insurmountable wall of solid ice. No one knew what lay beyond the wilds of the north. Although, rumors of terrible monsters and the like abounded. Someday, the ultimate evil would love to spend a holiday there. Enemies have entered the dungeon. There was a tavern in the woods called the Black Boar, one of those classic hero meeting places. A bard stood in front of this establishment advertising the ultimate evil's dungeon in his refrains, which regularly resulted in heroes flooding into the underground. He was soon losing. The Black Boar Tavern came to an inglorious end after the Horde visited the establishment. They not only refused to pay the tab, but burned the whole tap room down to boot. Well, quite understandable really, there was no Orc beer on tap.
Mission accomplished. The Poshlands were history, so three cheers for the Plaguelands. It wouldn't be long before the undead would rise again. Skeletons, zombies, white wanderers, well, maybe not the latter. And rise they did. To be honest, they were actually less than the astounded evil expected. But still, it used its mental abilities to reach out to them in order to seize them and to bring them under its control. But the evil did not succeed. Another power had already taken possession of them. A massive shape rose from a crypt in the face. It started to swim in the ultimate evil's direction. You hold no power here. I will only obey the King of Gondor. I mean the ultimate evil. It is time for you to die, oh living ones. This was a tad unexpected for the ultimate evil. It would seem there was an imposter out there trying to use Zerpit's title. It would have to worry about that later, though. This threat had to be dealt with first, as the undead were obviously baying for a fight with the Horde. It could safely be assumed that whoever was controlling the undead was doing so from somewhere up in the wild region of the Plaguelands. The ultimate evil would need to send its troops there in order to eliminate this threat. Once again, the strange figure appeared, just like it had done several times before. The creatures of the unspeakable evil paused, confused, uncertain what to do. You fool! I warned you not to start a civil war! For that, you will pay! With these words, the mysterious figure disappeared once again. Probably hadn't had enough breakfast. Never mind. There's a skeleton king in the crypt just waiting to be pounded into a pulp by the horde. You shouldn't keep him waiting. That would be rude.
This is where the dead do rest. There is no place for the living here. Meet my sword. Frostgarn is hungry. It was obvious that negotiations were not an option here. Therefore, the powerful evil chose one of its most well-proven tactics to solve the problem. Hit it till it stops moving. The Skeleton King was unable to withstand the unspeakable evil's creatures and crumbled to dust under their mighty blows like a vampire in sunlight. Just like a proper vampire does. Not one of those little twilight woozies, but I digress. The undead remained completely unimpressed and steadfastly refused to be controlled by the ultimate evil. Something out there was stopping them. However, without a leader they were no longer a threat to the Horde. They just trudged about mindlessly, completely devoid of control. They were therefore useless to the ultimate evil. So the evil pushed on towards King's Envy in order to destroy the Alliance's remaining heroes there. 